All right, welcome back, viewers. This is part two of uh, removing, taking your governor apart. And uh, I didn't mean for this to be a part two video. I was trying to pause it, and I hit the wrong button. So I apologize. You're going to have to watch two videos. In the first video, I showed you where the governor is on a Turbo 400 transmission, how to remove it, what you need to remove it, and... I showed you how this valve inside here can get stuck, which would cause your turbo 400 transmission not to shift out of first gear or low gear. So, and then I ended that video or paused that video, so I thought, so that uh, I could remove my gear. So anyway, so looks like I didn't pause it, I hit stop. Okay, so just because the valve may have been moving when you open and close the weights on the governor, that doesn't mean your transmit. That doesn't mean that you're uh, you're done yet. If you look right here, I'm gonna use my pick. You have a tiny orifice right here. You see it right there, and it comes in from in here on the end of the valve. They intersect with each other. So your next step is to. Use some cleaner, some brake clean, safety glasses, you know, whichever, and uh, make sure those that hole is clean. And then check your journals on your valve and look for any rust pitting, deep scratches, anything that fluid could leak past that would also contribute to the transmission not shifting. Okay. And then once you achieve, once you get that done, then you, I still have to clean this one. Um, but once you get that done, you slide it back together just like that. Hold on, I put it back in. It doesn't matter what orientation you put it, you just, you put it in there. It should slide right in there. Now sometimes the roll pin that you knocked out you see right in here, follow my pick. See there's a hole there on the inside because after all the roll pin goes through the governor housing, through the gear, the hole in the gear. And sometimes what happens is the, uh, the valve will get stuck and them holes need to be cleaned up with some uh, emery cloth or you know, some type of thin sandpaper to kind of smooth them back out so that the the, uh, the valve when you're trying to remove it or install it doesn't uh, get caught on that because if you try to force it then you're going to scratch the journals on its way out and uh, you're going to be screwed all right uh, I removed this one for two reasons this is a fresh transmission I drove it a couple days ago test driving it and I realized I needed to change the shift points a little bit. So I've got to tune the governor a little bit. Not much, uh, but I got a spring here and a spring here. So I got to change those. And also I wanted to show you how to take the, uh, the valve, the take the valve assembly apart. Now I'm not gonna sh show you how to remove all the weights and everything because I've actually, I don't need to do that to this one. Uh, if you watch my other video uh, uh, in my playlist, marked uh, Turbo 350, um, and then scroll down through there, I show you how to remove and uh, disassemble these uh, governors. Take the weights and everything off to show you what you got going on. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I uh, appreciate you watching and uh, putting it back together. You just press this roll pin in with a pair of channel locks once you get it started. Uh, but you got to make sure you get these holes lined up perfectly. Otherwise, you uh, run the risk of breaking the gear if the holes are not lined up right. So I'm taking the valve back out. This one comes out easy because I've rebuilt this transmission. I've already cleaned this valve and whatever. But uh, I just, to show you guys, just because that valve might move in its bore 
doesn't mean your transmission will shift. You got to clean that little hole orifice out there too with some spray cleaner. Something's got some high pressure behind it. And then wash it off, air hose it dry. At that point, you might as well just wash everything. Because if you have a clogged air passage, and what you can do is you can put your mouth on the end of it, put the hole in the orientation where it's going to, you'll, you'll feel it, put it up towards your nose. When you blow on it, you'll feel a little stream of air come up and tickle your nose a little bit. That means the hole's open, but clean it anyway, because it might not be completely open. All right, guys, enough ratchet jawing. You got the gist of it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like this content, uh, hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to make this thing grow. And uh, I appreciate everybody watching. I really do. All right, thank you.